Hello friends. So let's see the other method of calculating the median of a data which is graphically. Now how do we calculate the median graphically? Now the key here is an OGIV curve. Now what is an OGIV curve? Don't confuse this curve with frequency polygon. Don't ever confuse OGIV curve with a frequency polygon. Actually this OGIV curve is cumulative frequency curve. So actually this OGIV curve is nothing but the cumulative frequency curve. So what we have to do is we have to see the running flow of all the frequencies or the cumulative frequencies and we have to plot the cumulative frequencies on the y-axis and all the data entries on the x-axis. right? And then we have to join all the points to get a cumulative frequency curve. But guys see this cumulative frequency curve is of two types. That's the punchline of this OGIV curve. There are two types of OGIV or cumulative frequency curves. And what are the two types? The first one is less than less than OGIV and the second one is the more than OGIV. So we have two types of OGIVs. The first one is less than OGIV and the second one is more than OGIV or more than cumulative frequency curve. So let's see what do I mean by less than and more than. We will do this with the help of one statistical data with the help of one example I will write the data and then I will show you how to develop the more than and less than cumulative frequencies and how to plot these two frequencies on the same graph. Now guys remember we have to plot these two cumulative frequencies on the same graph and after plotting them on the same graph I will get a point of intersection which will give me the median. That is a later on thing but first, but first of all let's understand the concept of less than and more than. Let's start 0 to 10, 10 to 20, 20 to 30, 30 to 40. So I am taking a very simple data for the sake of simplicity that you don't get confused and also you can learn very easily. So this is a very simple data. So what I am going to do is, I am going to write the cumulative frequency of this data. In two ways, the first way is, let's write it in first more than cumulative frequency. Now why am I writing in more than cumulative frequency first? Because this we are aware of. Okay, This you will do very simply. So more than cumulative frequency and after that we will see the less than cumulative frequency. Now what do I mean by more than cumulative frequency? I will write more than cumulative frequency like this. So first I will see more than 0. Then I will write more than 10. Then I will write more than 20. Then more than 30. Right. So I will write all the cumulative frequencies according to this data and in the case of less than I will do the same less than 0, less than 20, less than 10, less than 20, less than 30. Now guys you can see that I have covered all the upper and the lower limits over here and the last one which is left is more than 40. But I don't need to write the last one more than 40 because there is no data entry which is more than 40. I only have the class intervals up to 40 and I only have the frequencies corresponding to these class intervals which are up to 40 only. Above 40 I don't have any data therefore the last limit will be more than 30. Now I will write the running flow of these frequencies or the sum of these frequencies. You can say that more than 0, more than 0 I have all these frequencies. So I have all these frequencies and that will give me the whole sum which is equal to 20 over here. So therefore the cumulative frequency for more than will start with 20. And after that I have to see for more than 10 
and you can see that for more than 10 I am having 7 plus 3 10 plus 5 15 for more than 20 I have 3 plus 5 8 and for more than 30 I have just 5 and for more than 40 similarly I will have 0 so that's how we develop the table of more than cumulative frequency so this is the proper method now let's see less than cumulative frequency table in case of less than cumulative frequency table the procedure is no different so first of all we'll start with less than so guys do I need to write less than 0 I know that there is no data entry which is less than 0 so I'll start with 10 only okay so I will start with less than 10 then less than 20 then less than 30 less than 40 so these are the four entries which I need to fill so you can see that less than 10 I have just 5 frequency so I will write 5 over here less than 20 I have these two which is 12 less than 30 I have these three so I will write 5 plus 7 which is 12 plus 3 15 and less than 40 will cover all the frequencies which gives us 20 so my more than and less than cumulative frequency data is now ready so what do I need to do now is to plot this particular data on a graph okay so this was my original data this is no longer needed what I need here is more than cumulative frequency data and less than cumulative frequency data so these are the entries this is 0 10 20 30 and 40 and the data will go like this 5 10 15 and 20 so this is how the data will go right so now let's try to plot the graphs and see where the graphs intersect so first of all we'll see the more than curve you can see that more than 0 I have 20 entries so for 0 in the more than OGIF curve I will put the point 0 comma 20 because corresponding to 0 the cumulative frequency is nothing but 20 so therefore cumulative frequency will come over here and the classes or UL and LL upper limit and lower limit will come over here so first point will be 0 comma 20 then corresponding to 10 I have 15 so corresponding to 10 I have 15 corresponding to 20 I have 8 so this will give me 8 now in front of 30 I am having 5 so this will be 5 so that's how we complete and I told you more than 40 will be 0 so let's put a 0 over here so this will be my cumulative frequency curve which is of more than type so this is a cumulative frequency curve of more than type right now let's see the cumulative frequency curve of less than type okay or OGIF curve which is of less than type or less than OGIF curve simply now see less than 10 I know there are 5 entries now less than 0 there will be 0 entries so I can start from the origin only less than 10 I have 5 entries less than 20 I'll have 12 entries so this is where less than 10 is less than 30 I have 15 entries so less than 30 I have 15 entries and less than 40 I have total number of entries which is 20 so this is how the graph will look like now guys see this particular value will give me the median okay 
this particular value if I try to plot it exactly perpendicular this value will give me the median and this is coming out as approximately if you do the calculation the median is coming out to be near 16 or 17 let's take it 16 only so the median here is coming out as 16 this is not a very accurate graph if you do it on a graph paper you will get the exact values so you can see that the median will come out as 10 now guys what I am trying to convey here is that if you plot both more than and less than OGIF curves now guys you can see this is the more than OGIF more than OGIF and this is the less than OGIF now you can see that the, these both curves or these both OGIFs they intersect at a certain point now the speciality of this certain point is that the abscissa or the x coordinate of this point of intersection so if I have the point of intersection let's say point of intersection of intersection of less than and more than O gives is x comma y then you can say that x will give you the median and y will give you x will give you the median and y will give you now I will tell you this one later now here you can see that the y coordinate of this point of intersection is 10 that is a later on thing but you can see that the abscissa will give you the median and that's how we calculate the median with the help of OGIF curves right now the beauty of this point of intersection is that the y coordinate is coming as 10 now you will ask what is the beauty about that now see the total number of entries were 20 right and the y coordinate is 10 that means the y coordinate will give you if the total number of entries is n right if total frequency is equal to n then y coordinate will give you n by 2 so this explains the basic definition which we studied for median that the number of entries before and the number of variables after they both are same right so this gives you the 10th value right now the y coordinate corresponding to this value of median is giving you 10 which is nothing but the half of total number of variables okay so that's the beauty of this OGIF curve that if you try to plot these two curves more than and less than OGIF curves and see the point of intersection then the abscissa will give you the median and the y coordinate or the ordinate will give you